Hi there, everyone. How you doing? It's Jeff C. It is uh, Tuesday, August the 5th. So much going on, so many things that I've been covering, so many people I've been in contact with and, and discussing what is going on with Ebola. And I came across this um, this um, news segment from last night. It's quite, quite a big news segment. It was the Aaron Burnett Show, whatever the fuck that's called, right? Uh, live from Wall Street. You know, Miss Wall Street, uh, you know, bringing you the corporate media programming. And if you're new to Free Radio Revolution, you haven't been here before, I have bad news for you because CNN is the headquarters <laughs> for propaganda, White House propaganda, New World Order propaganda, Bilderberg propaganda, CIA propaganda, Council on Foreign Relations propaganda, you name it. There's nothing worse than CNN. And it's really hard to be worse than say the dumb turds it's worse you know how can you be worse than msnbc or uh abc news <laughs> you really can't unless you're cnn <laughs> cnn just takes the cake i mean they just take it to another level this mind control so i wanted to do this last night i was so tired i didn't get to it but uh i want to do it now with you i've had a couple of coffee so hopefully i'm ready to go and uh, I want you to take a look at this. Behold the spectacle. Behold the uh, the absolute unbelievable mind control that you're going to see in this segment. And I think this is very important. This is kind of what my forte is doing this show is to break down the corporate media. I want to show to you that these people are, are reading from a script. They are all have their talking points. They are um, all pushing the, the, the buttons that need to be pushed in order to program you into the state that they want to program you into. And as I speculated in my other video, um, I said that there's a high probability that all this Ebola scare is done to freak you out and to convince you to get vaccinated, right? Because the secret serum, the secret serum that uh, saved that uh, doctor there, you know, um, is going to save you. It's going to save you and your family. So you better get down to your local gymnasium and get vaccinated. And maybe if you don't, they'll come to your home at gunpoint. I don't know how far they're willing to take this. But there is a plan in motion. And Ebola has been at the root of this plan for a very, very long time. And many people are working on this. I congratulate everyone out there that is putting whatever information they can to break this thing down. Um, so here we go. Let's listen to uh, Miss Wall Street here, Aaron Burnett. Uh, Aaron Burnett, out front, out front, out front the country. Good evening, everyone. I'm Aaron Burnett. Out front tonight, the breaking news, an Ebola scare in New York City. Doctors now awaiting the results of tests on a man at a major Manhattan hospital to see if he has the deadly virus that can kill up to 90% of those it infects. The man was tested after being admitted to the hospital with a high fever, gastrointestinal problems. He had recently traveled to a country in West Africa where Ebola has been detected. We have this fast-moving story covered from several angles tonight as it develops. Jason Carroll outside Mount Sinai Hospital here in New York. Dr. Sanjay Gupta outside Emory <laughs> University Gupta! Hospital in Atlanta. That's where another American with Ebola is being treated. Uh, and another American, a third with a confirmed case of Ebola, will arrive there tomorrow. Our David McKenzie is the only television reporter in Sierra Leone where troops have just been deployed to help contain... Yeah, yeah I mean, for all we know, he's, he's standing in front of a green screen in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, right? Yeah, he's in Sierra Leone. The deadly outbreak and the panic there. And I want to begin, though, with Jason. Deadly with you outbreak, here in New York City. Panic. What's the latest? Well, Aaron, I think what's important to remember here is that doctors are really acting with an abundance of, of caution after this. So I'm not going to make fun of people for their looks, but this these androgynous 
television hosts and anchors, it's just there's no end to them, right? And I don't know. You know, this is all part of the programming that they're putting out there. But uh, once again, here, give us the fear, Mr. Andrade. Uh, came here, was able to walk in, Jason and Carol. was immediately hey. isolated. Carol Jason. You <laughs> can just flip it around real quick, eh? And after doctors learned that he had been to this area uh, in West Africa, here's what's important to know about this. A New York City ah. Health Department official tells CNN, CNN that after having conversations with the CDC and after checking with doctors here, that spokesperson says that he believes that it is unlikely that this patient has Ebola. Also, during a press conference just within the past hour, the chief medical officer uh, here at Mount Sinai with the Mount Sinai Health System says odds are that the patient does not have Ebola. But the fact that this patient was in West Africa, came in this morning with flu-like symptoms, uh, doctors here thought it would be best to act with this abundance of caution. He was immediately... I yeah, and that's the double speak that they've been giving us, um, breaking down a lot of these videos. And, you know, on one hand, no, he probably doesn't. The doctors, you know, are convinced or are pretty confident. And, and then on the other hand, it's the most deadly disease ever. And it's just like Sanjay Gupta, I mean, this, this piece of shit turd here, uh, who is Mr. Ebola. And the other day he was going on uh, about how, oh, you know, they're, they're testing six patients, but it's not a big deal. I mean, because it's not air airborne and, and uh, they're not in isolation and yeah, it's no big deal. It's only Ebola. And of course, anybody who's really dug into Ebola, if you, you can watch a number of videos here on YouTube uh, where they show these uh, villages in Liberia and the uh, amazing lengths that the caregivers, the doctors and nurses and whoever else is there to document the scientists go through incredible extremes. They douse themselves in bleach. They, they put, you know, head to, you know, uh, feet covered you know, completely airtight, you know, very, very extreme caution. And yet here, no, nah, people might have Ebola, but no, nah, it's not a big deal because it's not airborne and there's no chance that you could get it uh, from being next to them in the hospital or whatever. And it's the double speak that they give us because, of course, at the same time, they're telling us how crazy the Ebola outbreak is. Look at this headline here. Uh, this is off ABC News. Out Ebola outbreak epidemic out of control right this is how they they give us the fear right this is so this is from yesterday right and uh this is exactly what's going on on the corporate media so let's continue with uh mr androgynous here isolated in fact he is still in isolation uh tests are being run right now as we speak and aaron it should take anywhere between a day and a day and a half before we know these test results yeah. and until the test results are in this patient is being treated, as we said, with this abundance of caution. He is being isolated. Aaron. So Jason, do they have a, a system in place? You know, they say isolated, but were they really prepared? <laughs> Absolutely, without question. Um, oh, yeah. You know, doctors here. There yeah. is a, a unit here that where doctors are accustomed to dealing with. So I, I wanted you to take a look at this. So she asked them, did, were they prepared? You know, did they have this? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, 100%. Oh, they, were, they have doctors. They had, that's a script, all right? That is not reporting. There, there's no way that's reporting. This guy shows up on the scene, and he knows for sure that they, they're completely prepared for the worst uh, possible, well, the worst outbreak in Ebola history. And just happen to have six patients, which they don't even mention in this this report, but they did in another, that are being tested right now, and perhaps many more right across the United States, where they seem to be testing. I put the report up last night, where N is it NBC News put up 22 patients being tested for Ebola symptoms, um, and yet you know this guy knows he's got all the answers. That is a script. This guy is an actor. That's what these reporters are. They're not reporters. Reporting is dead. When it comes to the corporate media, forget about it. You want to get reporting, you got to come to the alternative media, and even there you have to be careful. But these people do not report. They read scripts. They are actors. That is what they do. So let's continue, Mr. Actor. Patients like this, they know what the protocols are, they know what to do, they know how to treat uh, patients, even with a rare, possibly, you know. Can you see this guy's reaction here? Just play it back a bit. That where doctors are accustomed to dealing with patients like this, they know what the protocols are, they know what to do, yeah, they, they know, know how to they, treat you uh, know. patients, even with a rare, 
possibly yeah. know a rare disease. This guy's shaking his head here. Look at this. A virus like Ebola. They're treating the <laughs> symptoms. What I'm being told is, you know, if he has a fever, fever, they do what they can to try to bring the fever down. If the patient becomes dehydrated, you do what you can to try to hydrate the patient. There are a number of doctors here, Aaron, who are accustomed to dealing with a patient just like this. All right. Jason Carroll, thank you. Jason. Car well, thanks, uh, Carol Jason. <laughs> Carol Jason, nice, nice job there, Carol. Um, yeah, I mean, he knew everything. They, they're completely prepared. They have experts. They know this. They know that. They know to hydrate people. They know everything. They know it. How is that possible? How is that reporting? That is not reporting. This is a movie. This is a script. These are actors. This is Miss Wall Street. She's married to a top executive in the Citibank, right? One of the the uh, centers of the New World Order. CNN is, is one of the worst sources for news in the history of the world. I mean, you can't get much worse. <laughs> Let's continue. Thank you very much. I want to go now to Atlanta and Emory University. Sanjay Gupta is there. And Gupta! Sanjay, you've been watching here, the American Dr. doctor Ebola. with Ebola. Uh, he's being treated there, was brought, of course, from Africa back to the United States with Ebola. What is, uh, how is his condition tonight? Well, we hear that uh, things are looking pretty good for him. Uh, it's the hospital right here behind me where that special isolation unit is located where Dr. Kent Brantley is. He is the first American to ever set foot on U.S. soil with Ebola. Uh, we heard he had a conversation with his wife yesterday, Aaron, 45 minutes. They had to do it through a glass wall for her protection. They did it over a car and a phone system. good. But I'll tell you, Aaron, it's been a rocky several days for Dr. Kent Brantley, somewhat culminating with the experimental serum that was flown to Liberia to try and save him. Yeah, here comes the serum, the super serum. Last Thursday, Dr. Kent Brantley thought he was going to die. It was the ninth day since he came down sick with Ebola. His condition worsening by the minute. Nine, nine, he called his nine, wife. Nine, nine, nine. Little things, I, I like to notice all these things. Do you notice the, the drums in the background, the um, African instruments that they're playing to give you that fear Right, that tension, right, and then of course the photos, which are done to just perfectly mind control people. This is how they do it, folks. I say it all the time. To say goodbye, but he also knew just hours earlier a secret, highly experimental drug called ZMAP had been delivered to the clinic. Zombie the serum was delivered in sub-zero temperatures and with clear instructions, allowing the, the virus now. to thaw naturally before admitting. And, and then see how the music changes. And now all of a sudden it's it's more of a like uh, traditional type news music driving you know like there's been an answer there's a solution first there's the you know I don't know what that instrument is it's not actually a, it was some sort of percussion but it actually plays notes I think that's uh, like uh, some sort of um, ah fuck it I'm not gonna even bother trying to figure out what it is somebody else tell me what that instrument is but you notice how they change it and all of a sudden you know it's 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 more. Uh, 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 it's like a more calming sort of thing that they've they found the solution. Strength. It would be an agonizing eight-hour wait. When it arrived, Brantley told his colleague Nancy Wrightball, who was also sick, Righty that ball. she should have the first dose. No. But as Brantley's health deteriorated it. and he became more desperate, he asked for Wrightball's now thawed medication. Yeah, <laughs> I said, uh, you know, you take the medication, right, Righty Ball. Uh, right, Ebol? Right, Ebol? Where's her name? I've got it here. Secret serum. Ah, fuck it. Yeah, here she is. Uh, Kent Brantley. There she is. Right, Ebol. Right, Ebol. You can't make this shit up. I've shown this over and over again, just in case people haven't seen it. But that's how it works. It's how they do it, folks. They put it, they, they code it so that those... Those uh, illuminated Satanists out there can get the nod and the wink and have a laugh and kick back and watch the zombie apocalypse break out in perfect comfort in their home. It was a risk. The treatment had been tried in monkeys and it seemed to work. Yeah. But never before had it been tried in a human. Not Crazy. You know, and it's like he says, no, no, you take the serum, uh, right, Ebol, you take the serum. And then all of a sudden, he changed his mind. He's like, no, give me that. Give me that serum. I want that serum. And he took the serum, and it saved him. Can't make it up. Not even to test safety. Dr. Kent Brantley would be the first. While doctors don't often use this term, 
They describe what happened next as miraculous. Ah! Within an hour of receiving the medication, ah! Dr. Brantley's condition seemed to make a dramatic turnaround. His breathing improved. The rash over his trunk nearly faded away. I do hope that it was as impressive as being described, because if it is, that bodes very well for that particular product. That bodes really well for that particular product. You got a product, it's a hit product. People make a lot of money, pharmaceutical giant corporations. Everybody's going to get a, a taste of the pie, right? It's all a lot of money to be made on this whole thing. Um, yellow ribbons for Kent. And, okay, so we had yellow, uh, we had the um, green ribbons for Sandy Hook. And then for Boston, what was the color? Was it blue? Um, it was a turquoise, light blue for Cassidy Stay recently. And at each one of these events has the ribbons. So the ribbon is always a form of mind control. And now it's yellow ribbons. So let's continue. By the next morning, Brantley was able to shower on his own before making the 6,000-mile ah. transport to Atlanta. <laughs> he showered. He played a game of rugby. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, another first. Watch as Brantley walks off the back of the ambulance. Woo. He became the first patient infected with the Ebola virus to ever set... That's one small step for man. One giant for mankind. Man. 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 ...who also received the ZMAP serum will join Brantley at Emory University Hospital. Right, Dr. Ball. Bruce Ribner leads a team now charged with saving their lives. Right. You see the mask see, with there, the there uh, air purifying Get system over here. Get the, Makes them... Get the mask. Got the outfit. He's got Sanjay Gupta. He's all ready to go. Got the script. Is there a teleprompter there? Ah, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. They know what they're doing. These are seasoned pros that delivering bullshit. I'm sure they've used this doctor several times before. That's the way CNN works, right? Such utter bullshit. Much more comfortable, I'm sure, to, to breathe in and also purifies the air. Awesome. He gave me an exclusive look at the exclusive. protective suit he and his team will have to wear every Fine. time they enter the room to treat their new patients. See? Covered from head to toe. His own vital signs will yeah, need to be yeah. checked. So, hey, hey. Yeah, this is what they do for this guy, right? Look at this, look at this. <laughs> it got it tied around his head. Oh my god, that's freaking hilarious. Well, you look like a complete fool, but uh, I suppose that's the point, right? And yet they tell you that the people that were brought in with, uh, this is on the report that I showed last night, that uh, six people being tested in New York City with uh, Ebola-like symptoms, that, uh, and they just did, ah, just come back from Liberia. Um, no, no, we don't need to quarantine them. We don't need to take any extra precautions. The doctors know exactly what they're doing. Well, why aren't they dressing up in this fucking gear? <laughs> that the risk is small, but it'd be even smaller if these patients did not come here. Yeah, script. If, if you don't have anything magical to provide, script. why take the risk at all? Yeah, there we go. I think you've been in that part of the world. Yeah, there we go. And you know the level of care that Racism. can be delivered. And our feeling is that they deserve the best medical care the music. they can get. The best medical care may not be Mind just control. supportive therapy. It may lie in the experimental serum that likely saved both Brantley and Ray There you go. Lives. There you go. You, you can't make this shit up, right? The whole music. Let me just play that little part again here. You've been in that part of the world, and you know the level of care that can be delivered. Yeah. And our feeling is that they deserve the best medical care oh. they can get. The best medical care may not be just supportive therapy. It may lie in the experimental serum that likely saved both Brantley and Wright's lives. Yeah, wow, look at that. Look at that. This is turd. I don't know how you sleep at night, you son of a bitch, you Freemason fuck. But you are a lying scumbag. You are an actor. And you should fucking feel like the lowest piece of dirt on the planet. Because you are an actor in this giant fucking farce. And I'm disgusted, but I'm always disgusted with CNN. And I'll tell you, Aaron, the science here is just really Ooh. neat. Uh, they're talking about what is known as monoclonal antibodies. Simply put, they inject animals with the Ebola virus, and they get the cells that start fighting that virus. Hey, did you hear that? Could I, should I play it again? Let, let me just let me just play that again for you. Uh, they're talking about what is known as monoclonal antibodies. Simply put. They inject the animals with the Ebola virus, and they get the cells that start fighting that virus and collect those cells 
and that's essentially what makes up the medicine. Okay. That's what Dr. Right. Bramley... So they get, they get, you, you inject them with the Ebola virus, and then they collect the cells along with the Ebola virus, and that's what they put into the serum. Wonderful. <laughs> Received, and that's what they believe caused such a dramatic improvement yes. in his overall You're condition. Right. And, and, now, right. and I know it's miraculous. I yes. know it was untested, that it was very risky. But what about everyone else? I mean... Nearly a thousand have died, all of them Africans. Suddenly, two feel. white Americans. Uh, suddenly, white Americans. Look at Mrs. Wall Street. You know, uh, uh, a thousand people have died, Africans. So they're only half people, right? They're only half people. Now, just for my black listeners, this lady is a fucking racist cunt. So is this guy, all right? And I think it's disgusting the way that they've reported on this shit and the way that they're portraying Africans. And you want to find out about how they, they've uh, documented this thing and how they do this thing. Uh, in fact, I can show you here, uh, I was just talking to Greg about this, that if you put in a search for Ebola, look what comes up first. And this has been like this for uh, a month because every day that I look, it's always monkey meat and the Ebola outbreak in Liberia. Monkey meat and the Ebola outbreak in Liberia. It's the number one thing. Don't believe me? Try to search. Guess what comes up? There it is, right? Just type it in and search it. Vice News, the $410 million Shane Smith, a Freemason who's completely sold out to the New World Order and is a scumbag and a fucking liar and an enemy of humanity. And that's what we're at, folks. We have to start calling these people what they are. They're the enemy. So Vice News is the enemy. And the fact that they're there and they're putting this fucking racist garbage up, trying to make fear, you know, people eating fucking bats and shit like that. Yeah, that's how they live. But you know what? Eh, you know, it's a different part of the world. They don't have fucking running, running water and all the luxuries that we're used to here. But those are human beings every bit as much as you or I. And I have nothing but sympathy for the real sufferers of Ebola, especially the Africans who have none of the access to the facilities that they would have here. Anyways, I don't want to belabor the point. Let's continue. Um, get the disease and, and suddenly all the stops get pulled out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let me I just mean, play that back again because me. It's a dramatic yeah. improvement in his overall condition, Aaron. And, and now, I know it's miraculous. I know it was untested, that it was very risky. But what about everyone else? I mean, nearly a thousand have died, all of them Africans. Suddenly, two white Americans um, get the disease and, and, they get and the royal suddenly treatment. all the stops get pulled out. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, this, this had never been done before. I mean, he was the first human, so I think there is now some Do you hear that? Truth. It's never been done before. He was the first human, right? So, well, I don't know. Okay, he's the first human that had the serum, but do they mean he's the first white person to get Ebola? I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, and the question becomes, is this something that could be, you know, made more available to the masses? Cops get pulled out. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, this, this had never been done before. I mean, he was the first human, so I think there is now some proof of principle. Mm. Uh, and the question becomes, is this something that could be, you know, made more available to the masses? For I mean, he was the first human, so I think there is now some proof of principle. Mm. Uh, and the question becomes, is this something that could be, you know, made more available to the masses? Okay, so that's the key, all right? Uh, Red Pill did a great job breaking it down, showing how this is the whole plan. Make it available for the masses. This is how they're programming you. The real disease is in the vaccinations. The real killer, the real depopulation plan is in the vaccinations. It's not a mistake that uh, well-known eugenicists get together every year all the time in private meetings, Bill Gates, uh, Oprah Winfrey, um, you name it, the, the, the most powerful movers and shakers on the planet get together, the wealthiest people, George Soros, that they fund these things, that the Soros Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is directly connected to the corporations that are developing these uh, Ebola strains, developing the so-called serums to treat the strain, which of course is, th this is how they do it. Look, this is their, their magic plan. We'll inject animals with Ebola and then we'll extract those cells that are being attacked and somehow they're going to put them in uh, the masses. We'll put them in the masses. You know, you know who the masses are, by the way? Uh, talking to Greg about it. It's the walking dead. That's what we are to them. We're the walking dead. So they go home and they watch the walking dead and they say, hey, hey, hey that's the sheep.
This is a very unusual situation, Aaron. Typically, you, t you test things. It goes through a clinical trial yeah, to test for safety, to right. test for how effective it is, and then they figure out if it can be distributed to the masses. This sort of accelerated things, and we know that the particular company that's making this has already secured more funding to do exactly what you're saying. Awesome. It doesn't happen overnight, but, but, but maybe this is something that could help a lot of people out there, as awesome. you say. Awesome. Give it. Deliver it. Way to go, Gupta, you fucking sock puppet. Evil motherfucker. I mean, how evil do you have to be? I mean, how evil do you have to be? How do you sleep with yourself? How do you get up and make this face and get on and do this act? Because you are nothing but a scumbag fucking shithole Freemason son of a bitch actor. And you are lying to the people. And this is what's so evil about this. The fact that they get up every single day and they get their dolled up fucking Wall Street fucking princesses. And they're freaking, you know, bullshit freaking acting, you know, pseudo doctors with their fucking, yeah, okay, all of a sudden now, yeah, you know what, this is the first time it's ever been done, you know, normally you, you test this for years and you test it on animals, but nah, we just did it like this and guess what, it worked and you know what that means, it means it's ready for the masses, I think we can send it out to the masses, awesome. Great job. Gupta, thank you very much. And now Bruce Johnson is the president of Sim USA. That's the organization Nancy Reitbull was working for in Liberia. As right. Sanjay Evil. mentioned, Nancy is, is en route. She's going to be back in the United States tomorrow, awesome. the second person ever in history with Ebola to be brought on purpose to American soil. And, and to our knowledge, the second person ever with Ebola to be on American soil. Um, Bruce, how is she doing? I uh, just got a report that uh, she's ready to go on the flight. Uh, she's not in the airplane. They'll be transporting her uh, from our mission campus there in Monrovia, Liberia, uh, and get on the plane. And if all goes well, she'll be on U.S. soil sometime tomorrow. Great job. And, and, and do you have any knowledge at this point? You know, we were just looking at that incredible footage of um, Dr. Brantley stepping out of that ambulance in the suit, uh, you know, w with the bola <laughs> after that serum appeared to so miraculously save his life. Do you know if it's had a similar impact on Nancy? Yeah. Uh, the reports from our medical doctors there on site caring for is that uh, she's in a more weakened condition. However, today has been a good day. Matter of fact, her husband David told me that her appetite is returning and she asked for her favorite Liberian meal, potato mm. soup, which is a, a great sign. It, it is a great right, sign. Potato soup, eh? What's the, the significance of that? She asked, give me a potato soup. Right, this guy, huh, it's just another fucking actor. That's just it just doesn't end. They're just all actors. They're reading scripts, they're up, they're rehearsed. And, and and what about the experimental serum? Do you do you have any sense? I know she's had a chance to talk to her husband. Was he able to tell you anything about you know, we just heard how miraculously with Dr. Brantley he took it and an hour later the rash disappeared from his torso that he just so miraculous miraculously improved. How many times is, do you know how many times is, has it they used that word? I mean she's used it half a dozen a dozen times maybe. And they keep using it over and over. That's how they program you. That's what they're doing. I really hope people that uh uh don't follow my channel or listening to this because this is a perfect example of how mind control works in the corporate media, which is really my specialty, right? I break these things down. I show these lies. These people are liars. They're actors. It's all a script. They're reading the script. The whole thing is bullshit. Now, they're, they're planning to depopulate us. I have no doubt about it. I, it's, they've been telegraphing it to us forever. But this whole thing, this whole story... This Kent Brantley, the guy with the cape, uh, Nancy Wright, Ebol, right? You can't make this shit up. It's 100% bullshit. Know how quickly or if it had similar impact on her? Nancy received her second dose today. Uh, the indication is is that it did not have quite uh, the impact on Nancy as it did Kent. Uh, however, the slight improvements that our doctors there have been seeing have been encouraging. Uh, they indicated, they said, you know, Nancy might not be in the uh, condition where she's able to walk off of the uh, transport vehicle Sim. like Kent did, so don't be surprised by that. This, is a, this disease uh, really can weaken the body, and uh, Kent is much younger than Nancy, mm -hmm. and so uh, we're just grateful and very cautiously optimistic 
about uh, how she's doing right now. Yeah. So that's another way that they're going to program it to you. It's going to be the younger people that are going to be able to survive, and the older people it won't work as well, and will probably kill them off. Perfect way to get rid of a lot of the population, since most of the population now, I believe, are in their later years, you know? <laughs> And, and Bruce, you know, everyone is, is, is rooting for her and wants her to get better. Of course, there has I'm been, not, you know, I'm not rooting for her or you or any of them. I'm rooting for you people to fall and burn. I'm rooting to see you people. <laughs> I'm rooting to see the end of, of Aaron Burnett. I'm rooting to see you people hung. Well, I won't go that far. I root to see you people all put on trial, all put on trial for betraying the Constitution, for betraying the American people, and for uh, propagating these farces and mind control. <laughs> That's what I'm rooting for. That the United States would choose to bring people, no matter how tragic the situation, back home uh, who, who yes, have a, a disease that can kill so many. What do you say to those who say, well, this just, this just, this risk isn't worth it? You know, uh, I was talking with her husband, David, uh, yesterday on the phone, and we were talking that Nancy and Kent, if through what they have gone through, as a result that uh, a Clark. medicine can be found that will help eradicate Ebola, we said, you know, both of them would say it is uh, worth it what we went through and so uh, I don't have confirmation on this but I would imagine that the doctors at Emory Hospital are saying this is a wonderful opportunity hmm. for us to do research find out how the body has reacted to this and uh, we're praying that they'll be able to find uh, and produce a medicine uh, Aaron this is something that I, uh, I think it's important for us to understand in the United States hmm. in Liberia there are 50 doctors for 4 million people. Uh, I just heard that uh, segment about uh, the person in New York going to the hospital. Uh, earlier this week in Charlotte, we had a similar situation. Someone went to our local hospital, said, I've been in Liberia, uh, not feeling well. That's exactly what they should do. But here's the difference. Mm -hmm. We have a tremendous medical infrastructure in the United States. Yeah, so uh, maybe somebody can do this for me and find out what Sim USA is. He's the president of Sim USA. So what the hell is this? Why is a president? Why you know you you expect the doctors and even the fucking phony doctors like Sanja Gupta um, to 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 be interviewed and on this? But this guy Bruce Johnson, president S I M USA, Sim Sim, you know, really crazy. And of course, what he's saying is that it's it's the best thing ever because because we brought them back because we used the um experimental vaccination um we might now have the solution for everyone else and it's because we made the decision to bring them back to the United States that we were able to find the serum to solve the Ebola Zaire strain you can't make this shit up it's all a script. It's all bullshit. And these guys are scumbags. <laughs> I'm sure you know that, though. So the likelihood here and the caution that we're taking is exactly what we need to do. And I, r I really appreciate your reporting and oh. Dr. Gupta to help ah, yeah. me yeah. and awesome. my fellow citizens in America uh, know uh, that uh, this is something. Appreciate their reporting and Sanjay Gupta, just like uh, David Rockefeller uh, appreciated the media cooperating with their plan. Had the media not cooperated with our plan, we may not have been able to carry out our objective to create a new world order. I can't remember the exact quote, right? But that's how they, they do it. I mean, it's like, yeah, thank you so much, Aaron, for being a Wall Street slut, um, you know, for giving blowjobs to uh, Wall Street executives and then getting on with, uh, well, I won't get that crude, <laughs> getting on CNN and delivering the propaganda from the bankster elite. Uh, perfect, perfect. This guy is a scumbag. They're both scumbags. Something that, because of our great infrastructure, mm. uh, we can really feel safe. All right. Well, Bruce, thank you very much. And a very interesting point Bruce makes, which is uh, if Nancy and, and, and Dr. Brantley had not gotten this disease, that serum would not have been tested yeah. and hundreds more would have died. So uh, it's, it's interesting as you talk about the morality of this. Just to, just you to can't think make through that. Thank you so up. much, Bruce. <laughs>
And the next one next, Sierra Leone is the country with the most cases of Ebola. It's, it's basically it's shut down at this point to go in and out. But our David McKenzie is the only television reporter in the country right now, and we're going to go awesome. to him live next. Awesome. Plus an exclusive interview with an American who survived the deadly Ebola virus. What happened? How did he get sick? How did he get it? Here, mind control. Breaking news, a man in New York City being tested for Ebola tonight. The virus has killed nearly 900 people so far in West Africa. The World Health Organization says the deadly disease is, quote, moving faster than efforts to control it. The hardest hit country at this moment is Sierra Leone, 646 cases of Ebola. That's where our David McKenzie is. He is the only TV reporter in the country. And David, what oh, is shit. it like right now there? Well, it, frankly, it's scary because this is the epicenter of this outbreak. And while people in the U.S., Aaron, might feel a little bit nervous about it, but uh, here it's really ravaging the countryside. And uh, we earlier yeah, today traveled into the hot zone. We're on the road, driving into the worst Ebola epidemic in history. It's quite extraordinary. There's hardly any cars on the road. All the shops are closed, just one or two people walking on the street. When I've been here before at this time, it would be absolutely jam-packed. You could barely move. I'm not sure if he notices, but it's an absolute fucking torrential downpour that they're driving in. Maybe people have gone inside. I don't know. It's just a thought. Freetown is a ghost town. The government shut down the entire country for a day. For reflection, they say. Hammering three countries, the uh, outbreak is worse. Shut it down for reflection. What do they do? Hold up a giant mirror to the fucking the country? I mean, it's so ridiculous. Here in Sierra Leone, yeah. and the World Health Organization says Ebola is now spreading faster than they can contain it. Yeah. The fear is spreading with it. For months, the public's response has been dominated by denial and rumors, while Ebola silently kills. As the death toll mounts, they are tightening access to the roads that help spread the disease. And they're getting the word out to calm the panic. Like the rest of the nation. Getting the word out to calm the panic. They're getting the word out that Ebola's outbreaking to calm the panic. <laughs> Everybody's supposedly inside, but now it's not raining and they're outside. Um, yeah, can't make it up. And Mama Dude So stayed at home today. The elders put out the word to stay at home, and we need to respect that, he says. We need to stop Ebola. Yeah, yeah good job there. Uh, just to show you, this guy doesn't look broken up at all. He's got a big smile on his face. The elders put out the word to stay at home, and we need to respect that, he says. We need yeah. to stop. Yeah. yeah, he sure looks worried about Ebola. Ebola. But Ebola keeps spreading, affecting more people and wider areas than ever before. Look at this! Look at this shit too. What are they doing? What are they? What is this thing? What is it? Is it a fucking barcode scanner? <laughs> the kids too. They're coming up. It's a joke for them. They're smiling, right? Like, what the hell is this crap? What is that supposed to do? Right? What, what the fuck? Oh, it's just my fault. Health officials say that at best it could take months to stop it. There are no guarantees. Government the whole country is shut down. Yeah, the whole the country, country is the national issue. The whole country, everybody should stay home. With his family, they can pray with his family. Why do people need to pray? Well, because of this uh, problem we are encountering, this Ebola issue. We've been through a series of checkpoints. Each one is stricter than the last. One Red Cross official told That's us... how it goes. Each, each checkpoint is stricter. So maybe if you're lucky enough there, uh, you sock puppet fucking corporate media fucking whore, he'll drive up to a checkpoint and they'll just blow you away. <laughs> One can always hope. That along this road, Ebola is sure. everywhere. But it's through this point, Stop. into Calhoun District, where... This is a form of mind control, too. The whole method of using the stop sign, of course, right? The octagon, um, or sorry, the hexagon. No, it's an octagon. Ah, fucking only had three hours of sleep last night. <laughs> uh, but this is like one of the most powerful sort of mind control symbols that is out there. It's not by accident that they, uh, you know, have this guy in his blue shirt right next to the red stop sign with the military truck here and all that. It's all staged. It's all fucking... It is the epicenter of epicenter. this unprecedented epidemic. And it's there. There. The Just right there. Over that hill. The biggest battles are being fought.
And those battles are being fought here in Calhoun by uh, groups like Doctors Without Borders. They are scrambling every resource they have, Aaron, to try and get patients into a confined area and, if possible, of course, save them. Though the death rates are here are pretty horrific at around 70 percent, they say. And still they say there are people in the villages who might be too afraid or uh, not believe that they have Ebola who are not coming to treatment centers, and they say that could mean that this could last for many months and spread further than it has already in this region. Erin? All right, thank you. Terrifying. Thanks so much, Terrifying. David McKenzie. Terrifying. Miraculous. And now to a man who survived yeah. Ebola. Dr. Thomas Cairns caught a mysterious infection when he was working in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was in 1972, before the deadly virus had even been formally discovered. It nearly killed him. No one knew what he was, but uh, uh, what it was. But but Dr. Karens, you you survived this. Nobody knew who he was or what it was. Her blood uh, a few years later came back, was tested, and it turns out they could confirm all the signs pointed to the fact that you had Ebola. How do you think you were exposed? Well, I was exposed because. Um, I was working at the hospital there and a patient was brought in who was critically ill. We really didn't know what it was. Uh, he died. He was almost dead on arrival when he got there. Bullshit. And the local authorities wanted us to do an autopsy and to find out what it was. So I we just did. keep noticing his eyes going up, you know, and I notice this in a lot of these things. I mean, if he's reading a teleprompter, uh, which is highly probable, um, what does that tell you? Do I have to spell it out? And in the course of doing the autopsy, I pricked my finger. With the <laughs> About 12 days later, I came down with all the, the classic symptoms of what we now know as Ebola. So it took 12 days where you didn't have any symptoms, you felt fine. It just was incubating. Yeah, it was apparently incubating during that time, and that's fairly typical with the Ebola thing. It can go a while before the symptoms manifest right, themselves. And what were your symptoms? Well, a lot of severe flu-like symptoms, so classic flu, but much, much worse. Yeah, Headache up. and fever, very high fever, and nausea and vomiting and Man. cough. Uh, <laughs> there, this is what he's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> he's reading it. I had a very high fever and headache and bustle aches and weakness and diarrhea and vomiting, red eyes and rash. Way to go, you fucking... Uh, a fair amount of rash that developed over time, uh, which then led, led to some skin sloughing. So how long did it take for you to actually get better? It was a long six weeks, actually several weeks, I don't remember, and then gradually recovering over another six weeks before I was even able to go back up to the hospital to start working. And then after that, trying to gradually regain my strength. I had lost about 20 pounds, and uh, my wife was feeding me milkshakes to try to build me up. Uh, little by little, gradually getting my strength back, so that perhaps several months, then I was getting gradually full health again. And then, when, when they did realize that you had had Ebola, I know that you know you obviously came back to the United States, and and you had then in your blood right antibodies. That's how they were able to determine that that you had had Ebola. So so the CDC, well, can I just ask you this question? Because I know people have been very curious no. about this. Why is the United States bringing Ebola patients back now? And, and, and I believe yeah. your experience was they had been collecting blood from you to try to find those antibodies, build up Wars. serums and defenses for years, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, what happened was I did not come back to the U.S. at that time. It's a great script, isn't it? I mean, it's a great script. It's great when your actors have the same script. Everybody's got the script. Everybody's reading the script. Everybody's read the script. This guy's still got to look up at the teleprompter now and again. But, uh, hey... It's a great story, Aaron. Great, great job. Way to go, Wall Street cunt. <laughs> I stayed on another year and a half or so until my normal home assignment was due. Then we came back, and it he was stayed on. Still he stayed on. He's only suffering from Ebola. He almost nearly died, but he stopped. He stayed on. Finished my assignment. Why not? No, what it was until 1976. We were back in Congo, and at or Zaire, and at that time the or Zaire broke doesn't out. matter. We're back From, in Congo or Zaire or Liberia or Guinea or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's one or the other. It's all make believe. That point on, they did the serum surveys of 
Congolese or Zairians, as well as Lincoln. a number of us foreigners. And of the 50 or so foreigners they drew blood on, I turned out to be positive. So then, they were very in. Uh, they say about people that blink constantly that they're lying. Interested in drawing blood from me in order to maintain a serum bank mm -hmm. of a few uh -huh. units of, of serum back here at CDC so they could, in Shoot. case of a lab accident, let's say, at CDC, uh, somebody sticks their finger or whatever, they would be able to use it. So they did that for each of the next, uh, I suppose, three year cycles that we were in the states we would come back every three or four years and they would draw more blood and we would they would then keep it finally after the third time they told me that the antibody level in my blood had decreased so much mm. that it really was almost undetectable so then they haven't drawn any blood on me in probably twenty years maybe a little longer now so, so Dr. Ken so Brantley uh, who, who is it looks like miraculously, miraculously. Um, will yeah. survive somebody, uh, somebody uh, <laughs> one of you creative youtubers out there Maybe you could get this video and put together all the times that they say miraculously. I think that would make a real good, quick video. <laughs> Just to show the programming. That would be cool. He mm -hmm. received, he's still fighting, but he has been able to walk there around. He has received a blood transfusion yes. from someone Mark who recently Kent. did recover from Ebola. So do you think right. that that helped, that this could be the, the best way to a... I mean, obviously, it's not a full cure, but for those who have a shot, that getting a blood transfusion from someone like you when you have the antibodies could save someone's life? There you go. I think it's very possible awesome. because the general principle of immunology is if it's someone is principle. ill and with a, 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 a virus type thing and we can give a direct antibody infusion like that, very often their very lives often. can be saved or the illness can be treated. So I think it's very possible. All right, well, Dr. Karen, Very. thank you so much. Yes, glad to be with you. Great act. Way to go. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Yes, we finally made it to the end. And breaking news from Gaza next. And breaking news from Gaza next. More fucking bullshit from Aaron Burnett. <laughs> Yes, it's a very long segment. I thought it was very important. When I saw this, I was like, oh, I have to cover this. I have to break it down. I know I go on sometimes. But uh, my point is to show how scripted this is. The whole thing is a giant act. These people are all actors. Every single goddamn stinking one of them is an actor. They're all fucking, fucking homicidal, fucking pathological liars. Right? They're scumbags, and uh, they are programming the sheeple. And I, I you know people don't, oh, don't use the term sheeple. Sorry. I mean, if you're fucking so stupid that you can't see the bullshit that's stacked, you know, as high as, you know, the CNN's headquarters there in Atlanta or wherever the fuck it is, you're a sheeple, all right? You have to wake up at some point and realize that these guys lie about everything. I mean, they lie all the fucking time. It's a game for them. It's fun for them. They love it. They probably go back home and watch the news and giggle like schoolgirls, like this girl probably giggling while she's giving her blowjobs to the fucking banksters on Wall Street. You know, it's all a big fun thing. Remember what Erin Burnett did on, on Occupy Wall Street? Oh, you, you know, remember her show? It was called, I think it was But Seriously. Seriously? And she went and she caught the dumbest fucking uh, Wall Street, uh, Occupy Wall Street protester that you could find. Probably an actor. Most definitely an actor. Guy was a perfect idiot. And she just basically made him look like a complete fool, right? Uh, it's talking about how much money the banks make for Americans, how wonderful the banks are for Americans. <sighs> it's just plain evil. It's plain evil, these people, their connections, uh, what they're doing, their end game. And the end game is depopulation. I've always believed that. That's why I do Free Radio Revolution. The end game is the Georgia Guidestones. The end game is the Denver Airport. The end game is, is it's in all the movies. It's The Walking Dead. It's The Road. Remember that fucking horrible movie there? Um, it's, uh, you know, it's in the, the all the television shows. It's there. They want to depopulate the planet, and Ebola is the perfect way to do it. And whether they release the viral strain, the Zaire strain of Ebola, or whether they use the uh, the pretense or the bullshit story that Ebola is outbreaking throughout the United States, we have an epidemic at hand, it's gone viral, it's gone, it's gone airborne. 
And all of a sudden, you've got the CDC trucks, the D Ebola detection kits that were conveniently put in place months ago. It was early April when those, those Ebola detection kits were delivered to all 50 states. And you have the perfect scenario. You've got the vaccination that's already delivered. You've got the people that are already programmed. You've, you've used your outlets like Vice and ABC and MSNBC and the dumb turds to put the panic and fear and show all the images of what it's like for, for, for people to have Ebola so that they're frightened, they're scared out of their wits. And what do they do? As soon as they start announcing the vaccinations are available, people will be lining up. They will, they will literally be sleeping out overnight to get in and get their vaccinations, just like they do for their iPads and iPods and iPhones and all that crap, right? And uh, the sheeple are going to have no one to blame but themselves. Um, they really, I mean, that's the problem. I mean, we all had to wake up at some point, you know. And if people don't wake up now to this bullshit, I don't have a lot of hope for them, you know. I really don't. Uh, I don't have a lot of hope for any of us, really, other than just trying to expose what they're doing and trying to stop their depopulation plan. So it's time for people to get angry. It's time for people to call these people out. It's time for everyone to uh, expose the lies of the corporate media. Ah, it's a long one, folks. I hope you stayed with me. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope you can share this video uh, with people you know. Uh, send it to those people that are asleep. Uh, they might get annoyed by me and all my laughter. <laughs> but I can't help it when I'm covering the, the lies of the corporate media. Thank you all for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.